I'm Jim Reagan. I uh, worked for NASA for 36 and a half years. My first assignment was to come up with a, a watch that NASA could certify so the astronauts would have a watch they could use on the surface. The requirement was any piece of hardware that went on the vehicle had to be qualified. We had four brands that submitted the watches. One I ruled out because it wasn't a, it wasn't a capable wrist-worn watch like we specified, so we actually tested three. There was 10 different environments that we had to test. It had to pass all 10. If it failed one, it automatically failed the watch. Actually, two of the watches got eliminated in the first test, which was a thermal vacuum test. Omega was the only one that passed all the testing. Even I was surprised that I could get any watch through those kind of environments because the environments were really made for pieces of hardware you mounted on the vehicle and that type of stuff. The most extreme test you could do to a piece of hardware. The watch was always a backup. But if you lost the capability of either talking to the ground or having the, the digital timers they had or the digital timers when they went out on the lunar surface, the only thing they had to know how long they had been there was, was the Omega watch that they had on. And so I was highly critical of making sure that it was done right. I probably serviced the watches more than they ever need to be serviced. And where it paid dividends is Apollo 13. I gave the astronauts the Omega and the, and the other two as well to test to see if it met their requirements. And in the end, not knowing what my testing was, they chose the Omega. We were really happy it made it easy to get certified to fly on NASA. Omega has an extremely good name with NASA. They've been the single contractor that's supplied hardware since the Jiminy days through the, the shuttle and the space station days is still flying a qualified Omega watch.